So we have this conversation about the Confederate show that's going to be released on HBO and hats off to Aisha because I feel like she was one of the best candidates on this particular debate platform. She just went in. Was it will be done in a way that almost normalized it because they're going to give you human situations yeah. within yeah. the context of the Confederacy. It's going to normalize it. Place, it yeah. is that they are capitalizing on white people, excuse me, but white people who are, not all white people, but white people who resent the illusion of black progress. Hey guys, it's Marad Marani. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Before I get into this debate show and so forth and a lot of different storylines that we can talk about, I do want to let you guys know I do have a small link in my bio where you can ask me any anonymous questions, any advice you need, if any, you know, you want to help in some form of life or whatever, whatever you want to ask me questions. Whatever you want to do, there's a small anonymous little link in my bio that you can click on and ask me any questions. I've got a lot coming in, but just to let you guys know, just because I might be doing like an Ask Marad, whatever, whatever, in a, in a week or so. But let's get straight into this particular episode. I feel like this was very interesting to say the least because we have a lot of different people and I'm gonna, we're going to jump straight off the bat. We're going to get straight into Aisha. I feel like this particular person took the episode with the two bare hands. First hand, the impact. You talk about young kids who don't know anything except for a, uh, a black president. That doesn't matter down there. If you read the hate mail, if you read the threats that I received every day as a young black woman of color on air, my news director told me I could never tell anybody that I was Muslim because I'd have to fear for my life. Yeah. It was that was serious. And this is during the Obama presidency. And, and not only did I wit witness the weight racial hostility firsthand, but I also witnessed how we in that newsroom used images to reinforce the status quo. Mm -hmm. I lived in a place where blacks and whites were separated by a river, still are separated by a river, where that, that, that the school systems they had were so deplorable, they were a direct pipeline mm -hmm. to the prison system. Wow. And I watched mm -hmm. how, we t how we would not cover black girls who turned up missing, but we would, t we would spend mm -hmm. years, they probably still searching for Haley Cummings. Yeah. When she literally marked it so easily when it comes to the power of image. You just don't know how powerful that is. And she really talks about how when you're in the cinema or you're, you're watching TV, you're sitting down, you're not as obviously vigilant of what everything going around your senses, you're more relaxed and you know the power of image is more powerful when you're relaxed because therefore it can take over your subconscious and I feel like the power of image is something that was definitely underestimated when it comes to the main reason as to why the show is being created and I do feel like she was continuously pressing on that particular matter and so she should because it is very de uh, very powerful indeed. She talks about in the relation to how it's tarnishing the reconstruction and she really does bring a direct and I cannot stress the word direct, a direct forefront because she worked in a particular platform herself in the de in the deep south of the US where it's racist against black people, etc, etc, and how horrible it is. And, you know, people always use the narrator that it is, and it most likely is, but she was directly there. She has the factual information coming from herself, so you really can't argue against that. That's how you know when she was speaking with her chest, everybody was just quiet and listening. And we have a particular talking about how she's working for a platform, and she can't even say she's Muslim, she can't even say she's, um, you know, and being black and so forth. She got these death threats from people, like death threats because the color of her skin like are you mad let me know if you're mad because you know we can find out together because it feels like you are you got death threat because of the color of her skin and so forth how disgusting it was certain stories and so forth etc etc she saw she saw it for what it really really was which is why she's really regurgitating the points that she needs to for this particular debate episode i felt like she was very clean coherent concise i, I felt like she was interweaving her argument in a very normal and a pragmatic and clerical manner and i feel like she was very sharp and hats off to you, Aisha, I feel like you really took this episode, and so you should. So it is what it is when it comes to that. We have people like Carl and Bellarin, and apologies if I pronounce your name wrong, um, if it's Bellarin, Bellarin, I don't know. But I feel like these two people, unfortunately, were playing the scapegoat or, you know, trying to justify a reason, which is quite a bit irritating. But Carl did have a good point in relation to the fact that racial stories are profitable. It is what it is. The media use it, they take it, they make money off it. From that perspective, it's definitely true. Racial animosity is easily the most profitable thing to market right now. I mean, literally, just look at CNN's ratings and... By the end of the day, we have people complain, um, people like Carl saying that it's not the norm for black people to complain about something. Because black people are going to be watching it regardless because they're waiting for something to complain about. The white people are going to be watching it. <laughs> You know, as if you're trying to justify that whatever they're complaining about, they shouldn't be complaining about and that they should allow it to happen. Therefore, you are justifying the word. I cannot stress this word. You are justifying certain forms of racial normality that would happen subconsciously to people. And therefore, we shouldn't question it or they shouldn't question it. And I feel like that in itself was a bit interesting. And, you know, Blaren saying he finds it interesting himself, the concept of the show. Why do you find it interesting? Let me know, please. I don't understand why you would find a show that's, you know, completely against you and so forth to be interesting. But to pick off... Donovan's point, I felt like he was bringing a whole different perspective 
which was very interesting in that we don't, it is kind of speculation, we don't know what the, how they're going to create this, it could be something beautiful, we don't know how it's going to go, let's not jump the bandwagon, but ideally people would because obviously the history of what it has and how disgusting it was, then you can jump off with what I was saying, when the particular birth of the nation and so forth, and it can, it, it can rub off from that, regardless of it being in 1915, it still obviously is going to be the, um, the same in terms of how it's been echoed. So I feel like this debate really was interesting because people were just jumping off each other and interviewing each other's points and kind of, you know, opposing it and for it via different people. And I feel like John had brought in an amazing different entire perspective. Possibilities are there. I know that we're freedom fighters. We woke as fuck. We're on our horses and we want to chop people down so that they don't even put us in the position to be upset. But what I'm saying is that do you have enough evidence? I hear you about Game of Thrones, but do you have enough evidence, especially when you have two people of color coming to the table and representing their sides? Because they did an article, they did an interview in Vulture, Vulture.com, I believe, where they said explicitly, these are our intentions for this, like give us a chance. And you know, I'm glad that they all agreed they all agree that from a business perspective, it was it's going to it's going to be great. From a they all agree that from a business perspective, this is going to be a great show. So in that in itself, kind of just implies and implores that they are definitely thinking about this in all different manners, regardless of it maybe personal or not to them. They are thinking about this as what a proper show, when you know all the different pathways of how it could be good. And, and it could be bad and that in itself kind of reflects that this is a healthy debate it is a healthy conscious debate and you know i feel like donovan brought in a, a very good interesting perspective there it's speculation could be amazing could be not we don't know we're not going to the rise in the room Belarin and carl seem to be very confused i feel like they're justifying you know that idea of this, the now the norm for black person to complain about something so therefore they shouldn't be complaining about it therefore you're justifying subconsciously or consciously racial norms that shouldn't be going on regardless and then we have saran talks about white supremacist fantasy and it is what it is it is a white supremacist fantasy for a collection of people of how our racial climate is right now i think it'll be really interesting to see how this shit plays out on the screen like why for what like yeah, what's even the point? point like what's the what's point the like what's even the purpose it's literally a white supremacist oh, fantasy definitely and i feel like it's not like why do we need it i don't understand that like, why do why do they need to see that it's just i don't understand i find it very confusing very weird it's just not a necessity and i feel like she really hit the nail on the head when it comes to that particular phrase white supremacist fantasy and it is what it is dania beach is Confederate flags on the fucking gun shops, the pawn shops. True, it's true. somebody wrote. I wa I was walking. Somebody wrote, "Don't be a disgrace to God. Stay with your own color." On the on the fucking wall. I feel like Cassia. Apologies if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, was also just regurgitating what everybody was saying. It is very racist in the South. Another great point was the slave narrative. It's always got to do with narratives of slaves, twelve years of slave, and etc. 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 Like that's what I'm. I see so much when it comes to the media, when it comes to music, when it comes to TV service, they're always seen as a, the same way is always pushed to the forefront. And you know, it feels like this is gonna be happening again. Unfortunately with the Confederates, maybe, but we don't know because we're not the rise in the room. So I feel like this was a healthy debate simply because there were so many different directories of pathways of how people are inputting their perspective. So really and truly I did enjoy it. It's very interesting. Let me know what you guys think about my review and let me know what you guys think about these particular people. Are you feeling Carl and Bellarin? What about Saran? What about Aisha? Did you like the way she took it? What about um, Donovan and his interesting speculation? Let me know what you guys think. Hit me up on my Instagram, my website, please. Thank you guys for watching and I'll most definitely catch you guys soon.